Gotta be honest, it doesn't come as, as a um, surprise, but Cole Frampton is likely going to vacate his newly won WBA title. It's the only title, the w, it's the only WBA title um, at 122 pounds because Guillermo Rigondeaux has been named the champion in recess, which means he's the next mandatory for that um, remaining WBA title. So basically, you can say that Carl Frampton is the WBA Super World Champion at 122 pounds along with the IBF. Um... The WBA has said that the winner has the winner of Carl Frampton versus Scott Quigg has to fight Guillermo Rigondeaux next, and we see that Carl Frampton won. Carl Frampton is also the IBF champion. The IBF has said that the winner of Carl Frampton versus Scott Quigg has to fight Japanese fighter Shingo Waki, and it's looking like that's the route that um, Carl Frampton and his team are going to take. One question I have is why won't why won't they pay, or is there not enough money involved? I don't know, but why won't they pay Shingawaki some step-aside money and fight Guillermo Rigondeaux, or pay Guillermo Rigondeaux some step-aside money and fight Shingawaki with the guarantee that they'll fight Guillermo Rigondeaux later on in 2016? Now, it's something that has been done before in boxing. We know that boxers can take step-aside money, but... I'm wondering if there's enough money involved to do that. But a lot of fans are going to be upset because he's going to be taking on a a fighter who's been defeated. I believe Shingawaki is what? Shingawaki is 24-2 and two with 12 KOs. The last fighter he fought um, was named Waldo Sebu. <laughs> Nobody knows who Shingawaki is, especially over in the United States. But over in Japan, boxing is pretty big, so he's probably a big name over there. I don't know. But I'm wondering... Um, what's the backlash going to be like of him fighting Shingawaki over Rigondeaux? Shingawaki is an opponent that people are going to feel that Carl Frampton can beat. To whereas in a real test, is going to be fighting Guillermo Rigondeaux. Or he can just do what he said he was going to do after the Alejandro Gonzalez fight and just move to 126 and not fight uh, uh, Rigondeaux or Waki. We don't know, but as it stands right now, from my understanding and the way it looks to me, is that he's not going to fight Guillermo Rigondeaux. And the WBA has said you have to fight him. And the WBA being the um, most non-respected as far as the rules of the WBC, the IBF, the WBO, and the WB, of course, the four sanctioned bodies, they have been not known in the past to enforce their mandatories. But they got this new thing going in 2016 where they're trying to eliminate their secondary title and just have one champion and I have to keep explaining this for the fans who don't know because believe me there are fans who don't know the WBA has had two belts the WBA world which Scott Quigg had and the WBA super world which Guillermo Rigondeaux had the WBA super world is the more recognized belt another question I have is why did they take away Rigondeaux's belt they stripped him but technically didn't strip him but why did they take away his belt is another question to make a unification for their secondary title with the IBF. From my understanding, the WBC would never do a unification for the WBA world title. You know, the WBO would never do a unification for the WBA world title. But if it's a super world, which is the recognized belt, then they would do it. So my understanding is that they had to strip written out and get rid of that other belt so fans wouldn't question, well, how is... Scott Quigg getting a unification, but not Rigondeaux. How is the WB allowing that? So basically what they did was just get rid of one of the belts. But a lot of people felt going in that once the WBA announced that the winner would have to fight Guillermo Rigondeaux, a lot of people felt Cole Frampton wouldn't fight Rigondeaux and that if Scott Quigg would have won, Eddie Hearn would have kept him away from Rigondeaux. Now, the promoter of... Um, Carl Frampton, Barry McGuigan has been downing the Rigondeaux fight every time it comes up. So that goes to show right there they have no interest in it. And when it comes to Carl Frampton, of course Carl Frampton is going to say, oh, I'd love to fight Rigondeaux. I'd fight Rigondeaux anywhere. But of course, that's what boxers are going to say. But it's a shame now because now if he fights Shingawaki and doesn't move up and wait, what are people going to say? They're going to say that he ducked Guillermo Rigondeaux. Also, as I raised earlier is, why can't why can't you, why can't he go to the WBA or the IBF and said, look, I just want a unification fight. How you're going to give me two mandatories? Like I, I can't fight two people. So of course I'm thinking he can go to the WBA or the IBF and say, all right, well let me pay one of these guys off to step aside and fight them later on in the year. 
you know, but they're likely not going to do that. Um, T Street Controversy, there's T Street Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. I'll leave you with this final note. Don't let the media or don't let Carl Frampton tell you, well, you know, we couldn't fight Riggin Dow because we had to fight our uh, IVF mandatory. Don't let them fool you with that bullshit. They could have paid some type, made some type of step aside agreement or something. You know, they could have, they could have did a, um, even though, even though I don't agree with it, they could have did something like um, Golovkin versus Canelo's team did when they said, okay, we're not going to fight right now, but we'll definitely fight in the future. But I'm not saying prolong it to an indefinite time like Golovkin versus Cotto, I mean Golovkin versus Canelo, but say, all right, well, let me fight Shingawaki, then I'll definitely fight Rigondeau at the end of the year. You know, and pay Rigondeau some type of step aside money, and Rigondeau can fight another tune up after Jazza Dickens, you know, to get his name more exposure. Anyway, please subscribe. Um, go to my Twitter page. Follow me on Twitter right down below. The description box is uh, T Street Live. I cover every single major fight live. Please subscribe.